It's always exciting to leave Wisconsin and, and go after some other fish that we don't usually get a chance to shoot. Um, and Alyssa and I and, and my husband Jeff, we were all headed down to Texas and we were going to go after alligator gar, smallmouth buffs, grassies, anything else that we could come in contact with. Anytime we go to Texas, we always seem to hook up with Jack Thatcher of Extreme Boat Fishing. He's just an excellent guy. He's a lot of fun. Just a great, great all-around person. So we always have fun with Jack and he always puts us on fish. Jack called us last week and said, hey, the alligator gar is spawning. And we thought, okay, we better, we better get down there and get after those fish while they're up. We looked at the weather report. We thought we better check the weather. Jeff always tends to bring rain when he comes. So it looked good. Okay, let's go. As Soon as we get here, we land, it's overcast, flags are straight out. And we thought, oh boy, what next? This is gonna be a trip. But we've dealt with the wind, we've dealt with the clouds, we've dealt with it all, and we've shot some beautiful fish. And... Uh, shoot, shoot, get a second arrow, shoot a second arrow. A big old buff or something. You share them back? Oh yeah, that's oh, a great shot. Oh, working too hard. Wow. oh yeah. <laughs> when we were in Wisconsin fishing for the buffs, Alyssa had that awesome shot and awesome oh, opportunity nice and she blew it at that buff. And when we were in Texas, her first fish was a really nice buffalo and her personal best. So she was able to redeem herself on that trip. Biggest to date. And that's a buff. We knew we were headed to Texas to go after some smallmouth buffalo, but we also had alligator gar in mind. If we had the opportunity at a big alligator gar, we were we were going to take that chance. That's it. Fish <laughs> fish off, fish off. That's it. I got it. I got it. I don't know what it is? It's not very big. <laughs> Jack's a character. He's a lot of fun. We come down here as often as we can. Usually once, well, once every year or so. But he is a riot. He's always, you know, revving you up a little bit, and so, but no, he's a good guy. He'll take you out. He's dedicated, he loves the sport, he, he respects the fish, he respects everything. Yeah. I didn't even see that fish. I'm glad you poked him. I no? I, I was soft. Well, yeah, I could see a little something in the, in the water moving, and then just looking and looking, it's dark, you know, it's the black, but then I just saw a little light coming, something, something lighter moving through there. And, Laid him out. You, you, you carve down. You follow the scales on the back end. You follow the scales on the on the front up by the gill plate, and then you start at the back with your with your sheet metal shears, and you go all the way up right down the back spine, and then you peel out, pick on a side, and peel it out and fillet out, lay the meat off, and it's it's just a solid chunk of, of meat. It's just nice, white, beautiful meat, and we you know, and we're talking you know loins, almost like a loin on each side, like this solid solid meat. Batter them, deep fry them, and, and they're good to go. They're great, great eating, eating fish. After a day of fishing with my friend Alyssa, it's Jeff's turn to step in front of the camera. Look at that on the boat. <laughs> you gotta be doing that on the boat all day, because when he did that, we saw a big fish. That's, That's right. Let's get it on. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. Right, let's do it. Let's do it. Come to Texas because everything's bigger in Texas. Oh yeah! <laughs> that is all right. <laughs> back with the back one. Listen, listen, wait, wait, wait. Get one, get one, get one, get one. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Texas has a lot of uh, brush in the water. Um, that Texas brush is real hard hard to break and real strong brush. And it's something you gotta pay attention to when you yeah. shoot fish again. Um, those fish, I gotta keep seems fish like anytime there. you shoot a fish near yeah. something like that, it gets wrapped up in that brush and it's hard to get them out of. Um, yeah. Sometimes you might have to actually shoot the fish with another arrow to, to retrieve your arrow and to retrieve your fish. Oh. 
<laughs> Three of them sitting here. That's a chunk of fish. One thing you go to yeah. Texas is for, for the variety of fish they have to shoot. Um, they have a lot of different species and a lot of size of all those different species. But the one main reason a lot of people go to Texas is for gator gar. Alligator gar spawn at different times, different years. And it, you know, a lot of conditions come into play, you know, like for example, uh, you know, lake levels, uh, you know, how much rainfall we've had, uh, temperature, water temperature is the biggest factor. You know, when you get that water temperature right, they're going to start looking for, you know, uh, isolated coves and places to go to uh, begin their spawn. Uh, I start looking for them when the water temperature hits about 63 degrees. Yep, yep, yep. Go. Take, take. Nice shot! You got him! Nice, you got him. Here. Look at him, they're still swimming all together. Look at him. Look at her go. That was awesome, man. Good job. <laughs> nice job, Joe. Oh, Way to go. That was cool. That was a long shot. That was. Go bow fishing in South Texas for alligator gar, for big buffalo, for whatever else. Call this guy, Jack Thatcher, streambowfishing.com. He'll put you on fish. Thanks a lot, man. You bet, bud. Thank Enjoy you. It. Good to have you aboard. You know, my good buddy, Corey Brosman from Pennsylvania, uh, the host of Interlocks out there, he's been bugging me for three years to come out there and visit with them in Delaware and, and chase these stingrays around. So finally, we headed 1,100 miles east to Delaware to go shoot some stingrays with Corey and it was a blast. We had a truly incredible time. I spent time with my wife. Uh, I met up with some pro staffers from South Dakota, some pro staffers from Kentucky. And man, I tell you what, we had a blast chasing those stingrays in the Delaware area. Well, we weren't even out on the water maybe five minutes and I was on the top deck and all of a sudden Matt or Tim saw it and said there's one over there and it wasn't very big but it was a southern and I shot it right away and got it in the boat and that was amazing. I was pretty excited, I was very nervous, that my heart was racing and adrenaline was going big time. It was awesome. Well it just goes to show how professional Matt really is. It didn't take him more than a few hours to figure out these stingrays and Julie and Matt, they were on them pretty hard. We're gonna eat good tonight, we're gonna have some they call them poor man's lobster, but I don't care if they're poor man's or not, they taste great. We're gonna clean these wings up and put them on the grill tonight. The guys took the stingray and they put it in some tin foil with some butter, put it on the grill, it was amazing. I was actually shocked, a little nervous about trying it, didn't know what it would taste like, but it was really good. Wow, that was awesome. I saw it, man. There's like a pot of five of them right here in front of us. That was cool. One thing I'll always do before I bring these stingrays on the boat is reach over and pull that barb out. Woo, we got a big southern on again. We're just laying in front of us. <laughs> My wife just gave me a backup shot on that big boy. This is awesome, isn't it? I know, it's unbelievable. See how awesome this is? Get out here with your wife, your loved ones. This is what I'm talking about. This is what bow fishing is all about. Awesome job, honey. Thanks. You too. It's just amazing. You women have to get out here with your boyfriends, your husbands, and families. And once you're once you're out there and you do it, you're gonna be hooked. Well, halfway through the day, the Backwoods Bloodline boys left my boat and jumped on a boat with Matthew and Julie and they had a ball. In fact, they had one come right over a sandbar, which is really common. You just gotta be at the right place at the right time, and Matthew was. Good shot, Julie! Good job! Good girl! <laughs> wow! How cool is that? Tim's out here on this flat. 
And he says, guys, this thing is coming across the flat. So we came over here, we chased him down. We could see the weight coming through and we wanted this one for Julie and she put an awesome shot to it. And Dennis, bang, put a backup shot into him. It was awesome, nice shot, Julie. Good job, Denny. <laughs> Good, good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Yep. Yep. We have two in. Hey, That's a good one. Look at that stud. That's a good one there. Oh my gosh. That is a good one. Oh yeah. Awesome. That was sweet. Good job, boys. <laughs> Man, I hate this when he does that. He hates down down the tree. <laughs> yeah, he does. You know how many times we've done that? He's like, I never like to do that. <laughs> We are in Delaware, in the Bay of Niki Niki Timbo No So Rimbo Uma Muchi Gama Gama Gucci, and it was fast-paced action. <laughs> got my wife Julie here. I've got Ty Smith from South Dakota, his daughter Reagan Smith from South Dakota, and Ty's buddy Logan from South Dakota. They traveled 1,700 miles for this, and I think you guys got into some pretty awesome action. South Dakota to Delaware shoot stingrays. Reagan Smith, 14 years old. Putting a smack down with these. Good job. The stingrays are actually the, what do you want to call a carp of the salt water. Uh, they're like a nuisance fish out here. There's all kinds of crab pots out here right now. And uh, the crab fishermen absolutely hate the stingrays because they come in here and they'll just totally wipe out the crab population. And that's what these guys use for economy out here is they're, they're crabbing. Um, they want us to remove these fish. So it's a great time. It's fun to get it somewhere in a different state, shoot something different, but uh, we're having a great time. AMS bow fishing, H2O junkies, Delaware stingrays. You know, when we knew Regan was coming out from South Dakota to shoot these stingrays, we figured it would be best if she would use the AMS Big Game Retriever with the float system. You know, Regan only weighs 60, 70 pounds, and uh, we didn't want to have her get pulled over the side of the boat, so we figured it would be best to let her shoot those stingrays, let the float pop in the water, and we'll chase it down from there. we got three stingrays on. Regan has her float out here in the water. Tiger just got his in the boat. Logan's got one on here. Crazy, these stingrays are everywhere. They're feeding out here in this high tide. Reagan shot one on the float, and then I doubled up on one. Logan got his in already, didn't you? Right there. Or no, this is Logan. I'm confused. I'm all messed up. I got mine in over here, and now I'm helping Logan with his. It's right. Kind of lose track. You get three, four things going. And I think we're still chasing them. And this is so awesome. Like I said, I'm all here with my wife, Julie. We've got 14 year old Reagan Smith. Anybody can bowfish. We're all having a great time. Get on the water and make some memories. I personally consider the Kentucky Paducah area uh, like the mecca of bowfishing because there's so many opportunities for bowfishing down there. And uh, one thing I had on my bucket list was to chase me some big grassies. You know, I've always wanted to chase a grass carp because you stick a grass carp, it's hang on time, your fingers are bleeding. It's just a, a, a pure adrenaline rush, and that's why I want to go chase grassies. So we pulled this boat landing, it's a big bay, it's Sunday, there's pontoons, there's jet skiers, there's water skiers, it's windy, and uh, I, I didn't know what to expect, so we put the boat in, and we put it into the bay about 150 yards from the boat launch, and lo and behold, here's a 40 pound grassy, laying with his back out of the water, just giving me the great opportunity, he wanted to be a movie star, that's for sure. Bow fishing, you gotta love it. Big game hunting down here in Kentucky Lake. Awesome, that's why we travel 12 hours right here for big fish. 
during the daytime. How about that? Awesome. Be very quiet. Grass carp ahead. <laughs> Loving it, man. Get on the water. You know, so we're, we're out there in the bay and we're chasing these grasses and, and we just can't believe what's going on because these grass carp are supposed to be so elusive and uh, we're finding five, six in every bay that we get into and uh, we're pumped up, we're excited, we're taking pictures, we're putting them on Facebook and uh, my good buddy Dennis Redden, he couldn't take it anymore so he met us at the boat landing the next day to chase some more grassies. That's what I'm talking about. You put a great shot on that fish and it tore off out of here. And that's why it's so important. You saw that fish take off and you saw I got that back shot into it. Yeah. That's very important on these big grasses. They're so powerful. But these uh, fire eagles put the smack down on that fish and these tiger sharks. Got him in the boat. Got him in the boat. Good shot, Danny. Thank it's you. always a great Thank boat fishing with you, buddy. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah. yeah. I love it. For the boat. There we go. Nice shot, Dennis. Uh, thank you. Nice shot. We crawled that fish up in that corner there, and he didn't know which way he kept no. zigzagging back and back forth. Back and forth, and then directly, I mean, he come <laughs> barreling out my way. <laughs> Look at all those grapples hold. Yeah. They open up inside there, and they hold so awesome. Nice job. <laughs> nice shot, Dennis. <laughs> you know, the fish are a little bit different than they were yesterday when we were out here. Oh, yesterday we saw these fish way, way up in the shallows. We could see them swimming around. Today they're hanging about three to four feet of water and they're feeding. And we're finding their dust clouds and we're seeing their tail. And uh, we're seeing a little bit of their body and the big cloud of dust that they're sucking up all the, the bottoms with. And uh, so every day is a little different. So one day if you're not in the shallows, Look for them off a little bit in the four feet of water, and uh, you, you got to do a scout around for the fish. They move just like game fish. I got them. I got them. I'm on them. You're on me. I'm at the end. I'm at the end. <laughs> this is adrenaline right here, man. These big old fish are awesome. We're on a chase zone right now on a big grassy. He's hanging deep in this hole here. And Danny's gonna get a backup shot into this big boy. And get him in the boat here. Whew. Man, that's fun. That's what bullfish is all about right there. Big fish. Great group of guys in the boat today. Beautiful weather. Oh, yeah. And bullfish, I'm telling you. Nice grass. Get out there and do some boat fishing. Well, Danny. Woo! We had a blast today, didn't we? Been a good day. Oh. Anytime you can shoot fish of this size yes, in the daytime. It's, it's awesome. It is. It really is. I'm glad that it's all worked out. <laughs>